Hi guys, Ryu here from Blender Bros and in this video I will show you how I created this image. Let's go! So I want to show you the whole process basically. I want to show you how it's set up in Blender and uh, then how I went from raw render, which is this one, uh, to this image that you see here. Now before we start, I just wanted to say one thing. We released a massive course on rendering, lighting, framing, composition and compositing called Rendering University. And this video here just gives you a bit of a preview what kind of a knowledge is packed into that course. The course is massive and it will teach you everything you need to know about creating super renders and images basically for your portfolio, which is the most important thing for you as a 3D artist, because if you want to be treated seriously, you want to get some serious jobs and you want to charge more more money for your work, then your portfolio is literally everything you need to be able to do that. So check it out, link in the video description. The course is really in-depth, is split into practical part and the theoretical part. And like I said, we'll teach you everything you need to know about framing, lighting, composition, compositing and rendering. So now let's go into Blender and see how this scene is set up. And it's really simple, guys. Uh, it's basically a very long lens um, using I think 200 mm or 250 or 300 millimeter lens and uh, it's a very long lens meaning there's a massive compression so whatever is uh, behind this uh, highway uh, it's going to appear quite close which means I had to put it quite far so if I'm going to zoom out here you will see that there's my camera there's my highway and these are my buildings and because of the lens compression again uh, the buildings appear much closer so the highway and the buildings were created by me. I just simply, you know, these buildings actually are from my previous renders. And this highway was quickly designed uh, just for the purpose of this shot. Uh, so we got some glass barriers here to see through them and, you know, some very basic uh, kind of a highway going on. Now, the shot was framed really carefully and uh, the buildings were moved to position in a way to frame this bike very carefully with details and if you go to this uh, raw render you will see what I mean we got this um, you know echoing of this windscreen here and the back we got this black bar on the top which is a bit too heavy so I removed it in Photoshop in post you can see here it's kind of faded and there we got the framing in the back by this pillar and uh, these elements here and the bottom is really really simple with some kind of a bit of a trim sheet going across this bridge and that's it right now you need to remember that you're designing it with the uh, blurring in mind because it's a, kind of like a panning shot which means you focus on a fast moving object and you pan with the object which means the object you're shooting in this case a motorbike is going to be in focus and everything else is going to be blurred just like you know racing cars whatever shots if you're going to look at references you know what i mean so this was the idea, right? So I needed to, to uh, shoot it in a way that I'm going to be able to blur the background. So, you know, that's how this shot was created, okay? The lighting here is really simple. It's just a HDRI uh, with the sun coming from the front. So if I'm going to go to render view. So if you look at the sun here, the sun is in front of the highway and the camera is about 45 degrees from the sun, which means we're going to have a really nice angle here between the camera uh, lens and the direction of the light which means we're gonna have a really nice shadows here and um, you know highlights and all that it's gonna be a bit dramatic and the shadows gonna be just behind the bike okay so this is how the shot was done and now let's jump into photoshop and i'll show you how i edit it okay so in terms of renders created i got four of them one of them is the shot with everything in it just a regular shot second one is gonna be just a bike and a highway just in case i need to separate the bike and how i put some smoke behind whatever or darken the background then I have just a highway because I want to blur it and then I have just a bike because I want to be able to cut it out from a background, okay? So the first layer here, you can see that it's a blurred uh, background and this is really easy to do. Uh, all I've done is basically took this basic shot here, went to first to camera roll and I made it a bit brighter because you can see it's a bit dark. So I made it a bit brighter, right? Um, so increase the exposure here just a little bit, not too much. I pump the clarity just a tad and uh, I open the shadows and I applied it and then I went to blur um, and went with the motion blur and applied some motion blur to it. Don't You don't want to overdo it, right? You don't want to overdo it. Now what you could do is change this object to, if you, if you don't have uh, this set up, 
to uh, a smart object. Now, in my case, it's already a smart object. You can see there's like a tiny icon here. I could rasterize it and then I could just, you know, change it to smart object, right? This will allow you to add filter on the below and adjust filter settings whenever you want to. So if I went with the motion blur here, right, let's say on, you know, on this level uh, and apply it, you can see that I can just double click here, right? And uh, I can readjust this blur. So that's how the blur was created. And then we have the motorbike, which is on top of it now. Uh, this uh, motorbike is a little bit too bright, so uh, what I've done is I actually cut out the motorbike from the original um, render. Because if you look at this motorbike cutout, it's much darker uh, than this one, right? So what I've done is I simply I grab this um, I grab this original background here, okay? I control click on my bike and control J it, which means now I have this bike on top of my background, so I can move it above this blurred background, right? And I'm going to have a bike on a blurred background, you see what I mean? So now what you need to do is you need to blur the wheel, okay? But this is really difficult and complicated because of the fact that you're looking through a glass and also there's a lot of elements here. So the way I've done it, right, um, you can see this blur, uh, where is it? Uh, I think it's here, right? No, this one, right? Okay. So you see what's happened here. It's, um, I simply apply a spin blur and I created a mask that masks the, uh, the the elements that are you know spinning with the wheel. So the way to do that is you go here, you grab this bike, you cut off from the background, you go to filter and uh, blur gallery, and you go to spin blur. And let's move the spin blur here. And uh, these handles here outside allow you to allow you to adjust the size of uh, of the blur itself of the area affected. And the ones inside, the fat ones, they will allow you to adjust the fall off, okay, of the blur. So I made it kind of almost maximum and uh, adjusted it here. Um, so it kind of encompasses the wheel, you know, really nicely, right? You know what I mean? Get the gist, right? And then here I left it at default, the spin value, and you can go crazy, but default value is fine. And then you simply click on OK, right? Once you do that, Right, you'll get the you know a new layer with a spin on it. So then, you know, let's just apply this right. And in fact, let's just Control Z, Control J this, and then Shift Alt A, Control Alt F to reapply the filters. Now I got the same bike on top of one another. So I can mask the uh, the elements of the one to be um, you know blurred. So you just simply take a pen tool and you have to trace the entire wheel around here with a pen tool. Pentel, if you don't know how to use Pentel, there are tons of tutorials online how to use Pentel. But basically you trace it around, you know, around the wheel here and then around here and you mask it, which means once you create a selection, so you got a selection here um, of the wheel, right, here, and you simply click on the mask and you add a mask, right? So once you do that, um, you will have another problem because uh, you see that the filter spin across this glass here, right? So what you need to do is you need to fix that. So um, the way to fix that is with a um, clone stem tool. So you grab that, you simply select this entire glass here with a pen tool like this, right? It needs to be a straight selection. And right click and make a selection and uh, create maybe one pixel of, of feather. And then create a layer on top of your, um, your um, bike layer grab its clone stem tool and you might want to go low to like maybe 17 percent or even lower and alt sample here and you need to repaint this uh, area here okay you need to recreate it right uh, with your clone stem tool and this is how i recreated this bar here that was spinned um you know away by the spin blur okay Next thing is, so you know, you're almost done basically. The next thing, what I've done is I simply added uh, uh, infinite color layer, which added the toning. This is something that uh, you know you would need to buy. It's a filter that's a paid filter. Uh, you could, of course, do it with filters from Photoshop with uh, adjustment layers like curves, color, balance, selective color, gradient map, etc. But you know, infinite color is just superb, and uh, I really like using it. So if you're editing a lot of your renders, you're going to be really, um, you know, very happy with it. So go ahead and buy it and you can just scroll through different presets, 
make them stronger weaker and if you see that's the one i like and if you don't like it you can always adjust things here you can turn layers off and on etc so you have a lot of options you can also uh, harmonize colors if you want to so it's a very powerful um you know very powerful tool to use okay so um you know uh, that's that and uh, then um i added some final touches which basically usually in my case would be a uh, pro contrast through knee collection and uh and some you know uh, some cross processing so here that's a cross processing injected here with a pro contrast so if i'm going to grab this layer and go here to a knee collection color effects pro you'll see that mostly i'm using pro contrast here uh, which is this filter is fantastic filter it allows you to you know very easily boost contrast on specific areas you could you know you can um, drop opacity on it if you want to you can also remove this effect from shadow highlights etc then i added a filter and i went to cross processing uh, here and i added uh, the cross processing filters you can choose all kinds of different filters here and you can adjust it as well and then the last thing what i've done is i've added a vignette um, to close the image down um, so edit a bit of vignette also darken this part here and i uh, brighten this part here on top i can't really remember which one was it which layer was it but it was one of these layers here and that um you know kind of uh, brightened this top here so what i've done basically is I grabbed this bit, um, I selected it, I went to Edit and Content Aware Tools, went to Auto, clicked OK, and this will completely remove it, Control D, and then what I've done, and I simply dropped the opacity on it, okay? So, you know, dropped the opacity on it a little bit to introduce a bit of a shadow here, like a hint of framing, and that's that. And then the last thing I've done is I simply added some vignette, so this is very simple. You basically go to, uh, let's just do it in here. You go to camera row, um, so here, and you go to effects in the bottom, and you simply add some vignette. You can also, you know, adjust the roundness of it and uh, feathering and all that. And then you can go here to Photoshop and, you know, kind of manually tweak it. So you can grab a brush, uh, set it to some really low flow, uh, set the brush to black because you're working on a white mask. And you can mask it, you know, from from areas you don't want it to appear on. And you're going to have a nicely kind of like a focus image here on this bike. Now, in terms of text, this is our decal. And for the bike itself, I created a custom decal for it. So I created the decal in Blender and Photoshop. You can see my videos on how it's done. Um, the Firehawk, um, you know, decal that's actually created in, in with Decal Machine. And I simply dropped it in here. Okay, so the way I work with text, let me just bring this Firehawk text here on top. It's a PNG file, basically. Uh, what I do is either I control click that and turn it off and go to adjustment and drop curves. Then you can adjust it, you know, uh, to, to your image. Or uh, what you can do is uh, drop another layer on it, hold alt, clamp this layer here, select the color from the background here. And simply I'll delete and you can have, you know, your text here, whatever you wanted. You could move this here to the top and make it darker. So you could select, for example, color from uh, from here somewhere and or even darker one, you know, somewhere from here. So that's it, guys. That's how this image was created. Now, if you would like to learn in depth about framing, lighting, composition and all these elements, we just released a massive course called Rendering University, which will teach you everything you need to know. And you really need to know that to be able to create awesome images for your portfolio, to be able to sell your work and charge higher prices for your services as a 3D modeler or basically a 3D artist. So check it out. Link in the description. The course is superb and will help you a ton with framing lighting composition compositing understanding everything that's related to these subjects and uh, it uh, covers all the topics that are needed for creating super renders and really good edits thanks for watching see you in the next one